Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this GE side-by-side -side refrigerator. The model number is on the display. Also, model number and links for parts replacement will be in the description of this video as well. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings. And during this video, you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The complaint is that it's not working. We don't see any digits on the display. It's not cooling at all. So we're going to go ahead and find out what's going on. There's the model number again. And everything is defrost on the freezer side. We don't hear any fan motors going, um, any noise from the condenser or the evaporator fan motors. And the first thing we're going to do is check the wiring. Sometimes the wiring, it's underneath of the freezer door. In this case, it looks like the wiring, it goes through the top right there. So there's a Phillips screw on the top, but sometimes I check that first and sometimes I leave that for last because when we don't see any digits, that means it could be the board or the wiring where I just show you on the freezer door in the bottom um, left or the top. That's where most of the time the wires are broken, but I always start by checking the board. The board is one of the most common things when we don't see any digits um, on the display dispenser board. So here is the main computer board and we already see some signs of oxidation in those parts right there and you see it's kind of yellowy around it and on these capacitors they are popping out there's three capacitors there's another one behind it and here's another footage with the flashlight and it's a very very good indication that the board needs to be replaced because those green, I believe they call it dials or something. Uh, you can correct me if you know more about um, computer boards. But I know when I see oxidation in those, especially on those two green ones and those capacitors popping out. Um, by the way, remember to disconnect the appliances to avoid electric shock and take pictures before you remove any harnesses or any wire connections. And we're going to go ahead and start by replacing the board and disconnect all the harnesses. We're gonna do them one by one. The way you disconnect this, just do one side first and we just wiggle it until it comes out the way you see me doing in this footage. Once you do that, there's gonna be a green wire, which that's the ground wire. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that ground wire later on because you might want to remove that ground wire to put it on the uh, new one. Now, in this model, there's only one tab. It's like a plastic tab that you have to squeeze it with a screwdriver or a needle nose pliers. And this is like a little tab. You'll be able to see it once you put your hands on it. You see right there, you squeeze it and it will come right out. As you see right there, just remove it from the, from the housing just like so and as you see the dials and it's kind of brown in the back too so we're gonna go ahead and grab the new board and the new board looks just like this now I don't have the box because I have to return the other one because it has a core charge this is the instructions this structures is gonna apply for certain models you have to look up the um, um, serial number and if your serial number ends in those numbers on the um, on the right if your serial number ends on those numbers you will be um, you're gonna have to use this paperwork to make it work but to be honest with you I probably use that paperwork maybe once or twice in all this time that I've been doing appliance repair which is a very long time so now we're gonna go ahead and put the new board the new board is gonna be a different color it's gonna be green because this is kind of a universal one it's not an aftermarket it's made by GE but GE was able to make this board to work with one uh, more than one model so now I'm connecting all the harnesses basically the same way again the new board is not gonna look like 
the old one so don't start thinking that you might have the wrong part because you're not you know it's it's just it looks different but that's the way it is yes make sure all the harness goes where they should be and you're probably gonna have more connections than the other one but because like i said they connect they make this board to work with more than one refrigerator now as you see me i'm adjusting this ground wire normally what i do is i remove the wire from the old board and that i won't have to make any adjustments this is the old wire make sure you remove that wire i completely forgot about it so now i'm gonna have to um make this one work with the old ground that is coming from the uh, refrigerator wall or you can just attach it to that screw right there just whenever you put the cover back on just grab it with the screw and it will do the same thing however um for the purpose of this video if you want to do it the right way and the way it should be just cut the other connection the old connection that's coming from the refrigerator and go ahead and scrape it and you will be able to connect the wire right there but again if you're able to remove that old wire from the other one you don't have to do any of these connections so just splice the wire right there and go ahead and put a wire knot to secure the connection okay And once you put the wire knot, just, you know, locate the wire the way it's out of the way of anything. And at this point, you know, this is a very simple repair. Uh, most likely, you just have to replace the board. But after you replace the board, go ahead and connect the refrigerator. And make sure that everything is working. Now, at this point, I can hear the compressor working and I can hear the fan inside and I put my hand right there at the grill at the vent and I don't feel any air and you can see right there that the condenser fan motor is not spinning now this does not have anything to do with the board going bad or it might I mean it could be coincidence but again this not necessarily can be your issue so but again just double check everything in this case that fan motor is still fine and you'll be able to see in a minute, I take off the whole um, back panel. And once I moved the harness around, the fan motor came on. So it was just a loose, con a loose connection on the harness, on the wire connection right there. Now, what I did is I disconnected, plug it back in, check all the wiring and I don't see any broken wire or anything like that. I wait for a little while, make sure it's not gonna come off or anything. As you see, I disconnect it right there and connect it back again, move the wire around, uh, did a couple of things to see if it was gonna stop again and let it run for a little while. And like I said, it never stops again. So maybe the um, harness got loose of of um vibration or something and you know i disconnected plug it back again and everything is working fine at one point i was like if the um, connection is bad on the harness because you know this these wires are exposed to the weather and they're exposed to vibration and things like that so i was gonna go ahead and scrape the wires and connect them but I just leave this piece. This not necessarily have to be your situation. Once you got it apart, just go ahead and clean your coils as part of maintenance. You know, you're supposed to clean those coils at least once a year. So um, everything is working fine now. I'm putting the uh, back cover back in place. And putting the cover for the main computer board remember all these screws are one quarter screws you only need a one quarter screwdriver or a one quarter bed with your drill
So this is the paperwork, just put that to the side and always verify if your serial number doesn't end with those digits, with those numbers, and that will be uh, uh, helpful for you with that paperwork. Now just push the refrigerator back in place. And right now you will be able to see that we got digits back on the display board by the dispenser. As you see, now we got digits. And I'm gonna, I like to put this around between eight and between seven and eight on the um, freezer and between six and seven on the refrigerator side. But however, you can change the temperature and play with it however you like. But those are the temperatures that I use the most of the time. As you can see, zero is off, five is normal, nine is coldest. So basically five would be the recommendation settings, but I put those settings because I want it to work right away and it's been off for a little while. If this video helped you in any way, you can go ahead and leave a tip. You'll find the information in the description of this video. And like I said, if this video helped you, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell to receive notifications. Thanks for watching.